Talk to me about the transition from being a great collegiate athlete to playing professionally and in the Olympics. Well, I think, you know, you start at that level, and, and um, a lot of times we see the best athletes come from college. We see it in baseball, football. A lot mm -hmm. of these athletes are then transitioning to be the young talent coming up. Now the experience will come with that. But I think um, players like Tobe and Heath, who we're going to talk about, yeah. um, are, are making that next step and making a name for themselves. And so really when you're a champion at that level, you're, you, you face the top of the top. Mm -hmm. And I think she's just going to continue to make the national team that much stronger. That experience is now going to lead to more success for the USA team. All right, let's take a look at Tobin Heath from the University of North Carolina and uh, women's soccer and maybe the Summer Olympic team for the United States, Tobin Heath. Tobin Heath is a feature player in U.S. women's soccer headlines around the world. More Than Conquerors caught up with the popular American midfielder at the Home Depot Center in Carson, California. I guess it's kind of a preseason for us and getting to um, work on things and prepare for our next big competition, which is the World Cup, but that's not until uh, 2011. So we've got a lot of time, but we also have a lot of work to do at the same point. So we're trying to get in as many games as possible, as many practices, and kind of figuring out the puzzle pieces that will make the most successful team for 2011. What do you get when you combine a grassy play area, a round leather ball, a couple of friends, and a local youth center? You get a passion ignited for soccer just like the passion that's developed in Tobin Heath, making her a world-class international football star. I was uh, four years old, actually, and it began um, in the back of my local YMCA, uh, just playing with a bunch of kids, um, boys and girls, pick up. And ever since then, like my mom, she couldn't get me off the soccer field or away from the ball. As soon as uh, soccer became a passion in my life and something that gave me great joy, uh, it was actually pretty easy to sacrifice um, the other stuff, I guess, that comes along with growing up, being a teenager, um, doing, I guess, the normal things instead of having to go to tournaments and travel a lot and um, continually meet new people, new teammates. But um, the passion for soccer is so much greater than I had to sacrifice. For. So um, as much as I'd like to say that um, it was hard for me, the choice was pretty easy. It brought such great joy to me like personally, but also through relationships. Um, I guess the normal relationships through high school and stuff or like your classmates and stuff. For me, my relationships came through my teammates and my coaches. And I was meeting people and um, playing with people from all over the world and making these relationships that have lasted till now. Like even on uh, the senior team now, I have some of my best friends that I grew up through the national team system with and it's cool to grow up with somebody and watch them grow, not just through soccer, but also as a person as well. Her faith in God isn't pushed to the touchline. The disciplines of the game are only surpassed by her desire to serve her savior and her biggest fan. Obviously my passion for soccer and my passion for Christ kind of grew up hand in hand with each other and the more I grew to love soccer, the more I grew to love Christ and the more, um, like I said, it's easy to sacrifice for something you love and I love Jesus so it was easy for me to sacrifice the things that I guess um, are normal like desires growing up. It was easy for me to sacrifice that because there's so much greater to be gained. I'm huge about worship and I guess worship kind of going beyond just what people think of in terms of music and stuff like that. Um, for me, my greatest form of worship is just playing out on the field and um, playing with joy and playing for the right reasons, you know. And that goes further in, then into like my worship with music and my worship with friends, you know. And, and just worship can encounter so much, like even just looking out on creation, you know, and just like praising God for everything He's given us, everything He show, shows us. I mean, being here in California every morning, I just want to wake up and go to the beach immediately so I can be reminded about how great God is and how big He is in my life. And it's humbling, you know, it's humbling to stand on the shore and just to watch the waves come in and know that He's in control of everything. And um, for me, then it's easy to, for me to get onto the field then because it's something that um, he's blessed me with. And I'm just so thankful every day that I get to do something like that, you know, because there's so many things going on in the world. And for me to be able to do something and be so healthy doing it and find so much joy in it, I just have to thank him every day for it because I'm so privileged. Growing up then with the two loves of my life, which are soccer and Christ, um, it's just been fun ever since because it never gets boring for me, neither one of them. And I'm constantly finding out more and more about each one. 
and growing and gaining wisdom and meeting new people that help me along the way and give me encouragement in both areas of my life. And when they come together, I think it's just a perfect piece that's in my life. Tobin receives solid support through her family and coaches. Counting her blessings every day gives her the opportunity to play with gratitude, knowing that she's been given eternal life. I think the greatest things that uh, my parents and my, actually my whole family gave me is just love and constant unconditional love through everything. I mean, uh, soccer has been kind of a steady um, thing in my life and to just have them there along with me on the ride and supporting me and not, they never really got involved and stepped into the areas that they weren't really necessarily that educated about in terms of soccer and stuff, but they were just always there on the sidelines, taking me places. And that love, it just never died, you know? And having that and adding Christ into that equation, um, I'm just extremely blessed. And it was never, they never made me want to turn away from religion in any way. They wanted me to find Christ for myself. They never wanted to make it something for something that I felt like I had to do. But I saw Christ in their lives and how different they were. And, each one of my family's members lives you know it's a relationship it's not something that you can just write an equation for and give it to someone and they figure it out you know it's something that you have to feel and um, and believe for yourself and I mean growing up your parents face your family's faith it can only get you so far but it's not until you really encounter Jesus for yourself that you can begin to kind of walk with him away from your family and I had to learn that I guess at a young age because I was traveling so much by myself and I didn't really have that constant uh, mom and dad kind of holding my hand along the way telling me what I can and can't do so I needed Jesus to do that for me especially um, when I would travel so much so and I had that and it was a learning experience for sure but being able to come home and having that support in my parents and in Christ and them just loving me was the greatest gift they could have given me. As a Christian first and as a role model for younger players, Tobin recognizes the importance of friendships. Coaches and players play a big part in her growth as a person, allowing her to give the gift of friendship to others while playing soccer on the world stage. You can't really know someone by watching them play soccer. Yeah, you can see like what how they play, like maybe it's a form that you enjoy, like the way they play, the way they touch the ball, or the way they score goals, the way they defend. But it's deeper than that. When you can actually make a personal relationship with someone off the field, then you begin to understand them more, better on the field. And to give that to young girls and um, to show them that soccer is more about a lifestyle and you know it doesn't have to be all stressful out there. Like you have to, you can't make mistakes, you can't have fun. That's just that's rubbish you know and so many people think that to be the best you know you have to like give up so much you have to try so hard and it's it's such like a work against like the current you know but but it should be something that you enjoy doing something that you can have fun with something that even when you are at the lowest points in your life you can find a ball and go out in the middle of nowhere and put a smile on your face and I, I like to encourage girls that way because I feel like so much now everything's so competitive and so um, I have to be the best and people put so much stress on themselves when it should be something that isn't stressful at all but something that just comes natural to you and something that you find like a beautiful release in. And um, to be able to kind of just live with people, that's the only way that they can see it and be around people. So I love, I love being around young girls and showing them just um, who I am and how I feel about the sport and how I feel about life. For parents, I'd say just support and love your kids no matter what they decide to do. And if it is soccer, I'd say um, trust the coaches and um, give the, your kids the best opportunity in terms of um, getting the best coaches and the, um, the best facilities, I guess, the best club. But in the end, it comes from the desire inside of that player to be however great they want to be. And um, if you t throw away everything else, as long as they have that passion inside themselves, they'll be great. You know, it's not going to come from anyone else but themselves.